Season 3 of Stranger Things. What a time to be alive. I'm about to get into some spoiler territory, so I would recommend you leave if you haven't yet finished it. Stranger Things is my favorite show of all time. I haven't talked about it much at all on this channel because, to be honest, I wasn't sure how to tackle it or how to get all my thoughts out there in a way that felt original and unique. But after spending my entire July 4th watching Season 3, I've come to the conclusion that regardless, it's time to discuss this show. What's kind of crazy about Stranger Things is just how repetitive each season is on surface. There's a monster from the alternate dimension known as the Upside Down, and it's up to these kids from the small town of Hawkins, Indiana to stop that monster, while the adults and teenagers take on their own side storylines that ultimately end up connecting and reaching the same end goal of defeating the monster. The threats get bigger and bigger in scale each season, but the way that all the characters end up on their own paths, which drive towards the end goal, is always the same. That's the formula that works for this show, and to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if season 4 was the same exact premise, just with a larger threat, and different characters meeting and creating their own side storylines to defeat it, but still the same formula. And honestly, I would love that. The repetition works shockingly well for the show. And they find new ways to branch off these side storylines that feel completely unique and special to each season. The Duffer Brothers' creativity when it comes to Stranger Things is genuinely mind-blowing to me, and the fact that they can keep building upon these monsters and creating more mind-blowing visual suspense is just beyond what words can describe. There are two other critical aspects of Stranger Things that make it so compelling to me, aside from the amazing practical and visual effects, and that's the incredible synth score by Kyle Dixon and Michael Stein, along with the show's soundtrack in general. But of course, the most important part of the entire show is its characters. Eleven is one of my favorite fictional characters of all time, and that's much to the credit of Millie Bobby Brown. Not only are her powers awesome to see on screen, but as a character, Eleven is just so incredibly interesting to me. Watching her break through her damaged upbringing and become her own person this season was just beautiful character work. And her relationship with Mike was also so touching this season. Mike and Eleven's relationship is one of my favorite aspects of the entire show, and that's much to the credit of Millie Bobby Brown and Finn Wolfhard's chemistry on screen. It's mind-blowing to me how amazing these two are together given their young age. And then you have Hopper. His death this season just crushed me. When Eleven is looking for him after the Battle of Starcourt and he's not there, I just couldn't handle it. The fact that Joyce adopted her is so fitting and fits her caring motherly vibe, and I love this so much, but Hopper's death is going to genuinely damage Eleven, as you already saw when she was reading the beautiful speech Hopper wrote. One of the biggest themes of season 2 was home. Eleven repeats this word constantly throughout the season as she tries to find her home. Home. After going on her own journey in season 2, she finally realizes that home was with Hawkins, with her friends, with Hopper. And home is stripped away from her again when Hopper dies. Sure, Hawkins will still be home in her heart, but now that she's moving away with the buyers, it's going to be another difficult transition as she's once again pushed in a new direction. I'm going to miss Hopper, and I'm going to miss these two together. The post credit scene does hint at the fact that there could be more to come with Hopper. This Russian soldier mentions the American. I mean, this could have been Brenner, but maybe it was Hopper. I just love Hopper's fatherly leadership role in the series. And then, of course, we were Bob Newbie again this season with Alexei, aka Smirnoff. <laughs> they threw us another likable, funny, sweet guy, and then they kill him off right towards the tail end of the season. They even give us a similar slow motion death shot. Damn you, Duffer Brothers. Then there's Steve, another character that I absolutely love. His transition from cool popular douchebag to a lovable caring babysitter was perfectly done. And they make him an even better person by season 3 through his relationship with this new character, Robin. Then you have Billy, who is a perfect antagonist, and the writing of his character was perfectly fitting for season 3. And I love seeing his backstory develop through the void, and I love that he saved Eleven's life. Just a beautiful, perfect turning point for this villainous character. Honestly, and I mean it when I say this, every single character adds value to Stranger Things. I also love the show's subtle references that are easily missed, but also add value to the show. Every single season has these, and I usually miss them, but in season 3 I caught a couple on my first watch. One that I loved was the Spider-Man reference. If you notice, Will has kind of a spider sense this season, since the shadow monster entered him in season 2, he can sense when the monster is around or about to attack. Very similar to Peter's spider sense warning him of danger. When Mike, Lucas, and Will were in the jewelry store looking for a gift for Eleven, the employee's name was Parker, perhaps a reference to Peter Parker. 
Another reference I caught, which was a little more obvious, was that the series opened with the kids watching Day of the Dead, a zombie apocalypse film from 1985, and the Flayed look very similar to zombies throughout many points in this season, so maybe a little bit of a reference to what was about to come. There's just an extreme amount of care that goes into every single scene of the show. There's not one wasted minute, every single second adds value, whether it be through visuals, character work, or just references. So yeah, if you couldn't tell, I love this show, and I'm sad that season 3 is over, given that I've been anticipating it for the past two years. I'm gonna miss these characters, and can't wait to see what's to come in season 4. All of you are! You're treating her like some kind of machine when she's not a machine, oh, and I don't want her to die yes. looking for the Flayed when they've obviously vanished off the face of the Earth. So can we please just come up with a new just plan, because I love her and I can't lose her again! Just for one day.